Welcome to Taking Stock. We're talking about the property market and it's breezy here in Camps Bay, or is it Clifton? Where's the boundary of this place? I mean, there's no border fence or anything. No, Bruce, we're in Clifton. Are you in Clifton? Oh, we're in Clifton Road here. In Clifton, I know it's called Clifton Road, but there's a Clifton Road in, the, oh, there are like six Clifton Roads in this town. No wonder it's confusing. Anyway, so we're in Clifton. We're in Clifton. Is Clifton better than Camps Bay? Well, prices are generally slightly high, but Camps Bay is still a very much a blue chip suburb too. Okay, and then the Clifton 4321 and their blocks of flats on here. I mean, a hundred years ago, I saw a Tinas de Jong painting along here. There was like five or six buildings. I mean, there has been an extraordinary amount of development. This is not the real world. I mean, this is lots of captains of industry, I'm sure. Lots of asset managers live along here. Possibly lots of foreigners have got properties they come to for a month, a year. In the real world, on the other side of the mountain, to more general suburbs, what's happened in that property market? Uh, so there, there's no question that the property market uh, started to turn uh, towards a more negative uh, growth pattern about two years ago. Does that coincide precisely with the beginnings of the stirrings of the land debate? Yeah, I think it, 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 the land debate certainly had a, an, an impact on it. Um, I think probably the major uh, impact was due to the economy itself uh, and the, the slowing down of the economy, the lack of growth. Uh, also the cyclical nature of the property market itself. Uh, and we've certainly seen um, very sluggish house price growth uh, since then. I think that um, post the election result, our expectation is that the market is going to slowly start to improve, that house price growth off the back of a hopefully an improving economy will begin to gain some momentum again. And possibly a, a more friendly interest rate cycle as well. A more friendly interest rate cycle. Europe is stimulating, the yeah. US is likely to cut, we're in a cutting sort of frame of mind. Yeah, the interest rate will undoubtedly uh, have a, a positive effect if it's, it starts to get reduced. Um, and I think sentiment is the, probably the biggest determinant of the general market. Uh, and uh, an improving sentiment will undoubtedly improve the property market. I mean, is there a nationwide slump? Is there a part of the country that, despite all of the bad news, is actually seeing demand and seeing some growth? Yeah, there, there are always pockets of excellence uh, in property markets uh, throughout the world, and South Africa is no different. So there are a number of areas in the country, a number of genres of property types, where there's, in fact, buoyant trading and a buoyant market and house price growth. But generally but speaking, Well, uh, take the student towns, for example. The student towns are probably... Uh, the outliers and, and best performers. So Makanda, despite the fact that they've got less water than Cape Town, yeah. is, I mean, it's amazing what people will pay for houses there. Yeah, so they, there's, there's, a, you know, yeah. there's a supply and demand um, dynamic there, which is fascinating. A town like Stellenbosch uh, also continues to be a, a, a pocket of excellence uh, off the back of high demand uh, and low supply. Uh, I think the retirement um, genre itself uh, is one which is uh, also undersupplied and has a significant demand both within the major metros of the country, but also in the outlying uh, towns. Uh, I think we're continuing to see brisk trade on prime seafront uh, small town property like Hermanus or Plettenberg Bay, where again we're talking about a, a small market with high demand and low supply. Estate agents are a lot like farmers. I mean, for farmers, it's either rainy too much or too little. And estate agents, you go to look at a house, for example, and you say, well, what else have you got? Say, well, there's no stock. Yeah. And that's usually a great sign for the estate agency businesses because yeah. it means that stock is turning really quickly. Yeah. At the moment, you must have a huge amount of stock. People who have overextended themselves in recent years, people who may be moving, downscaling, relocating. There's, so, you know, there's a lot of talk around uh, the migration issues at times yeah. of political and economic uncertainty in South Africa. What's the stock take? No, there's no question that there is uh, stock availability. There's, there's lots of property for sale, but I think it's important to differentiate between uh, the kinds of properties that are on the market and priced to sell in the current market and properties which are on the market but which are hoping uh, to sell. And those are fundamentally two different um, selling types. What sells? Uh, correctly priced properties which are priced to sell in today's market where buyers know that they have the upper hand does, in the current environment. Does anybody know though? I mean this comes down back to the point of this lovely house over here which yeah. overlooks this beautiful Clifton area of Cape Town. Um, that you know, at 65, 18 months ago, now, uh, now, now at 49, you know, at some point, you know, it's a, I don't know, it's a barometer I suppose as to yeah. wh where somebody goes, I better grab it now before somebody else does, he has an offer of 45 or whatever. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a mixture of art and science here. So there is a certain amount amount of science. One is able to do a comparative market analysis of this road, for example, and look back five years and see exactly what sold at what date and at what price. But at the same time, uh, there's no way to tell 
which buyer is going to walk in the door tomorrow and have a look at this property and say, this is my dream home, uh, I want this, uh, and I'm prepared to pay this price. Typically, what sort of people buy these houses? I mean, it's not somebody who's going to come in and go to their bank and say, I'd like a mortgage fees and be paying 500,000 rand no, a month. It's very unlikely to be a mortgage buyer uh, and much more likely to be a cash buyer. So it's somebody who uh, has the means, uh, whether they be a local buyer or an international buyer, and who wants um, this property and who sees value in it, uh, both from either a local perspective, but also from an international perspective. So if one does the, the dollar or pound conversion on 49 million Rand and compares that with what you can get for the equivalent in other parts of the world, then there is often a, a very positive arbitrage uh, outcome. I mean, this may be a 50 million Rand house, but just up the hill over there in, I don't know, this lower Clifton, upper Clifton, there's a road called Nettleton Road. Yep which is reputedly the most expensive road on this continent, if not one of the most expensive roads in the world. And one of the reasons for that is the houses are big and, I'm sure, lovely, but there's no wind in that particular road. I mean, yeah. what is the price of the southeaster to properties in Cape Town? Yeah, I think it's, it's difficult to say what the specific premium is for wind, but there's no question that the composite uh, that you get from uh, a road like Nettleton with its incredible views, its position, the lack of wind, uh, and the size of the homes. People pay 100 million rand a house, though. Yeah, the, the entry level is more or less 100 million. Rand. Entry level? <laughs> more or less. I mean, and Certainly the, between 50 and 100. And, and, I mean, and there's still properties in Cape Town. I mean, the APSA Bank building in Cape Town is being converted now, and that's going at, what, 50 to 70,000 rand per square meter. So you're looking at studio flats at 2.5 million rand. 2 to 3 million rand, yeah. Astonishing. I mean, is there a market for that sort of stuff? Bruce, there is. Uh, there's, a, there's a market both in terms of investors and, in fact, end users. Uh, obviously, it's a question of affordability, but to the extent that one is able to afford that and finds it desirable, then that's where the market is for uh, those kinds of properties. But isn't there an oversupply of those sorts of properties? There was a boom, certainly, in Cape Town three or four years ago. The, uh, the letting market, the, um, the guys doing short-term rentals and stuff and using global apps to, to rent their properties, and people were running businesses and buying up flats and borrowing money and gearing themselves yeah. to the hilt. One gets a sense that that tide has gone out, and there are lots of people who don't have their swimming clothes well, on. Certainly, that market has slowed down. There's no, there's no two ways about that. But I think what's changed fundamentally from particularly a Cape Town perspective is that Cape Town is truly a global city now, and as a consequence, is very much on the global map. But how many foreigners actually buy? Because years ago, this was the, the speculation was, and there was lots of conjecture and nonsense that this was all just foreign owned, and this was oligarchs and drug dealers and you know all kinds yeah. of people with nefarious personal habits who were buying these sorts of properties. Yeah, the, the the foreign market is not huge, but it does make the difference. It's probably between ten and fifteen percent of that particular market, whether that's the inner city market or the Camps Bay or Clifton market. So, so they're not they're not making the price. It makes the difference. They're not making the price at all and in fact the, the the notion that a foreigner is going to pay more than a local buyer is is an absolute myth uh, they'll pay what the market what the correct market value is so the market is being made predominantly by locals and and the housing market through generations is a question of confidence it is will I be able to sell this property for more than I've paid for it five years ten years 15 even 20 years from now yeah and I think particularly a medium to long-term view so I think the notion of a of a quick flip uh, and the turnaround is, is really not what this market is about. But if one looks at Cape Town um, over the years, it has consistently performed exceptionally well in terms of house price growth and capital growth. And, uh, and I think that's what investors and speculators are looking at. What do you anticipate is going to be the catalyst for the next housing recovery in South Africa? Because generally, house prices, 3 4 5% down the F&B statistics, yeah. are pointing out that there's nationwide slowdown. Houses are cheaper today than they were a year ago. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the moment that we were looking for was the positive election outcome, and I think that's happened. And I think as we go through the rest of the year, we're going to start to see uh, positive political and economic signals, which are uh, going to compound on each other to create uh, a change in sentiment. And I think that sentiment is going to start to uh, become evident towards the end of the year, and that will be the catalyst to the housing market going again, not only in Cape Town, but the country generally.
Now, many people who can buy houses like this for cash have got global assets. They've got money they can put anywhere in the world. And we've seen, for example, migration plans. Countries like Portugal and others say if you invest an amount of money, I think it's $750,000 or could be euros, in our country in fixed property, you can get citizenship. And that, for many people, has been positive in places like Malta. Um, but the UK market has also been a really interesting one, particularly the London market, which has always got a good buy-to-let market, has been one in in South Africa, in which Andrew Golding has participated as an agent in a partnership with a UK firm as well. And many South Africans have done very well on that as the UK property market boomed and, of course, the RAND depreciated. Now, with Brexit and political uncertainty there, yes, political uncertainty in the United Kingdom, what happens to buyers from South Africa of global property assets? All of Australia's capital cities of all of their um, of all of their states have recently reported declines there too in a very hot property market. Europe is stimulating their economy. The United States cutting interest rates to try and keep that economy moving. Is the property market good anywhere in the world? More on that in a moment.